Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg, and welcome to this series on cloud supply. It's part of the Play series of complete instruments that works in contact. And as with all the Play series, what I really like about these is that they encourage experimentation and creativity by making them really easy to edit. Now, they're built around the idea of blending these two layers together, layer A and B. And I have a lead sound programmed up now. And this is just a factory preset or factory snapshot. And it's super easy to customize. We can get into the different layer browsers simply by clicking the magnifier icon. So for example, I'm going to maybe replace it with this one over here. And we can blend. There's layer A. Layer B. Command click to go back to the middle. We can turn either layer on or off by clicking on them. So it's really easy to kind of blend and experiment. We have these macro knobs that are shortcuts to tweaking and customizing the presets, and they're fun to play with. And they can easily be automated by right-clicking and using MIDI Learn, and you can map some hardware controllers to it. So there, I've just mapped one. So really fun and easy to experiment with. And I'm going to right click and just remove that automation. Now let's take a quick look at the interface to give you an overview of where things are laid out. So we can, as I say, immediately influence the sound directly from this main view. And we can get into the sound layer by clicking on this button over here. And we can use this to edit the sound for each layer or both at the same time when we use this link layer feature. So the idea is that we have the layer A controls here, the layer B controls here, and it's laid out really well and intuitively, but it's actually a fairly full featured synthesizer. We can turn parameters on and off here. We have filters, transpose, tuning. We have LFOs for modulation. We have modulation envelope, amp envelope, and we can adjust the amount of modulation via the sliders that pop up. We'll go through all this in detail. But there are the LFO, LFO2, velocity. You can see all the tracking based on the values of these sliders here. After touch mod wheel. So very full featured. There's layer A and layer B. And you'll notice that the macros stay active on all of these pages. So this is kind of the guts of Cloud Supply where we edit the sounds. Now we also have effects that we can turn on or off with the power button. And when we get into effects view, we can either customize or build our own effects chains. So here we can turn either of these on or off, but we have EQ for the A layer and the B layer. And then these effects are for the two combined. So we have a drop down menu with a whole bunch that we can choose from. And when we double click, you got to double click, not single click, but double click. The controls will update here to display the parameters for each of these effects in the chain. And we can turn each one on or off there and change them as needed there. So let me customize the effects on this sound. Maybe instead of this, I'll use that one or hot solo. It's a bit softer. Now, next we have a sequencer engine. Again, we can turn on or off there. And when we click there, we get all the parameters and it contains one lane for creating a melodic sequence of up to 16 steps. So for example, if I turn it on and hold a chord, the top is doing pitches and these are doing velocities. And we can have it conform to a particular scale or key. For example, if I want it to go to maybe A, and then I can click here and choose maybe blues minor. But then we also have six additional lanes where we can modulate the macro controls. So we can get some really interesting rhythmic type of modulation, which we'll explore throughout the series. And I'll just turn this off for the moment. Now, next we have macros. And here's where we edit and customize them. And each of these can have unique minimum and maximum ranges. And they also have unique shaper curves that we can draw or call up from a palette over here that we choose from. And you'll see that as I click on each of these assignments, the values are unique. And then we have the different 
curves available for each of these. We'll explore all this, as I say, in more detail. Finally, here we have a settings view with performance controls to adjust how the instrument responds to your keyboard. So the range of the instrument, pitch bend, range, glide, and so on. There's a little bit of portamento into each note. We can even access the layers from here, getting to the layer browsers and the stepper buttons and turn them on and off if we want to solo and adjust the parameters for each in isolation. So now that I've customized this instrument, let's save it. Now the way we save sounds here are with the snapshot function and you need to click on this floppy disk icon. And if you're not seeing it, it means you're in the info view over here. So make sure to click this camera icon for snapshots. And then when we click here, we're going to see all of the factory presets. And there's an initialized starting point, great for building your own presets. We can use the stepper buttons to go to the next and previous, but I'm going to click on the floppy disk icon to save this customized preset. And now that that's saved, we see it there. And when we look in this menu, we're going to see a user category with the user snapshots that are saved. So that's the general lay of the land. Next video, we'll start digging deeper.